All right. Now, the big topics that we haven't gone over yet that we need to talk about is partho para and meta direction. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask about that. Since I guess I'm this moving on because we already know, but like this, it is deactivates overall, right. but it deactivates this one less than the meta. That's right. Oh, and that's why it. That's right. right. Oh, yeah. But we shouldn't start with the halogens, though, because those are the, the weirdest yeah, case. Yeah. Let's start with the other groups, and then we'll do the halogens. So deactivated, it just deactivates the O and T less. So it's still an O P director, but it's right. a deactivator. Okay, that's, that's right. That's why you're getting confused. Yeah, because okay. you're thinking director. Right. Okay. Yeah, we don't want to confuse activation effects with directing effects. Okay. So I've already added one electrophile, and now we're doing our standard experiment of trying to add another electrophile. But if you think about it, there's three different places that this electrophile could add. It could add here, here, or here. Well, uh, there's names for these positions. Well, what's this position called? Right, and this one? Meta. And this one? Here. Or sometimes they're just called O, M, and P. Ortho, meta, and para. Uh, it looks like you don't have any trouble remembering that. I just remember up to remember the order. Up. O, M, and P. Now, some people might think that there's five different positions, but there's not because this is also a O position and this is also an M position. So how many ortho positions are there? Two. And how many meta? Two. But how many para? Just one. So if the electrophile ended up here, that would be an ortho attack. But if it ended up here, that would be a meta attack. And if it ended up here, that would be a para. So we, we've already um, figured out whether the first substituent makes it easier or hard to add the next substituent. But now we need to ask, where is the second substituent likely to attach? And that's what's called directing effects. Uh, and there's two different types of directors. There's the OP directors, and there's the meta directors. And we can build that into our table right here. These are the OP directors. So all the activators are OP directors, and also halogens are a special case that are also O and P directors, even though they're deactivators. And all the deactivators besides the halogens are meta directors, M for meta. So this is a good table now to have in your notes. We're going to explain why these activators are O and P directors, and we're going to explain why these deactivators are meta directors, and then we're just going to memorize that the halogens are O and P directors. It's not worth our time to go into the details of this. These are a special case we'll just memorize. But these we need to be able to explain because you're pretty sure to see some test questions asking you to give explanations for those. That's a popular topic here. So uh, let's try to give those explanations. So um, is this an O and P director or an M director? O, P. Yeah. Why? Because when you do the resonance form, it puts the minus charge on the O and the P. Is that the way your instructor explains it? Or GSI. Explains ah, OK. <laughs> now, all right, that's good. Now, the way that um, in the textbook, so what, what you guys are doing is you're thinking about the resonance structures before the electrophile attacks. Um, in the textbook, they focus on the resonance structures after the electrophile oh. attacks. Um, that's what is more common. Um, which way did you know? Uh, which way did your instructor? That makes more sense because once that goes on there and it has a plus charge, then it'll neutralize the plus charge on the ortho and paras. Uh, let's see, I'm not quite sure if I followed um, that idea. What? Once the electrophile attaches and you have the carbocation intermediate through resonance, the nitrogen can. Um, stabilize right. the plus charge right. on ortho or para. That's right. Oh, okay. All right. Um, now, the argument that you gave at the beginning about the resonance before the electrophile attacks, that's a pretty good argument, too. But that's not the argument in the textbook. It's, it's more common to think about the resonance after the electrophile attacks. So maybe we'll focus on that. All right. So um, let's show what would happen in an O and P attack. So in an O and P attack, Now, if this bond attacks, I have a choice between putting the electrophile on the O carbon or the M carbon. If 
Right, now I'm going to put it on the O carbon, which puts the positive charge over here. Um, and now we need to show how this is stabilized by resonance. Now the best way to show this, I think, You have to bring one down from the nitrogen, don't you? So here's, the here's all the resonance structures that we can draw. There's a really good chance that um, you're pretty sure on the test to have to do this type of thing where you draw all the resonance structures of an intermediate. We've talked many times how the big theme this term is resonance. Well, we're certainly seeing how that's still the big theme here with benzene. Make sure that you put all the charges in the exact right places in all these resonance structures. Now, what we've shown here is um, we know that once we add the second electrophile, the benzene is unhappy because it has a positive charge. However, this positive charge can be stabilized by this electron donating substituent. But when would it be most stabilized when it's as close as possible to the nitrogen? So the thing that's important here is that there's a resonance, so uh, that there's a resonance structure that puts the positive charge over here. The positive charge is much happier over here than it is over here or over here because it's closer to this lone pair. So this, uh, between these three resonance structures, this one is the best. Between these three resonance structures, this one is the best over here, because it puts the positive charge the closest to the electron donating substituent. And we can even show specifically how this gets stabilized by resonance by drawing this resonance structure over here. So this is showing why this O attack is favorable. Uh, I have a question. On an, the actual test, if we have to draw like the mechanism for it, Instead of drawing all the resonance form, is it allowed to put it in brackets and write sigma complex? Uh, yeah, that's what it depends on what your instructor uh, wants. Now, when I'm drawing a mechanism, uh, when you're drawing the mechanism, it's usually allowable to just draw one resonance structure. We've talked about it in the past. All the resonance structures are equivalent, so you can draw whichever one is convenient. The only time you really need to draw all the resonance structures is if they ask you to give an explanation for why, say, this substituent is an ortho para director and this other one is a meta director. Usually, if you're not asked for that type of explanation, if you're just asked for the mechanism, you can just draw one of the resonance structures. So you don't need to say sigma complex. I don't think that would usually be necessary, no. Okay. So if you're just doing a normal predict the products or a normal mechanism problem, you could normally just draw one of the resonance structures. But if you're trying to explain why a substituent is an OP director or a meta director, that's when it's helpful to draw all the resonance structures, like we just did here. So the point here is we want the charge to be able to get as close as possible to the, to the substituent, because the substituent is an uh, electron donor. Um, and um, maybe to save time, we won't draw this, but if the electrophile had attached to the P position, we would get the same result. However, if the electrophile attaches to the M position, there is no resonance form that puts the positive charge right next to the nucleophile. We should really show that. So. so here's what we get from a meta attack. This is what we get when the second substituent attaches to the meta position. Now let's draw all the resonance structures here. We need to draw all the resonance structures here.
So here we go. And this is what the resonant structures would look like for a meta attack. So there's never the one that's the best. Yeah, the best picture is when the positive charge is right next to the electron donor, but the positive charge is never on this carbon after the meta attack. 